رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بذلك شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوهيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد Last Friday, we were fortunate and blessed enough to have the ability and the opportunity to sit down and to read, study, and take direct benefit from one of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, And that in itself is considered to be a blessing. That's a ni'mah in itself. To have the ability to sit down to do good and for Allah to use you for good. And for Allah to allow you to maintain your time upon good. That's the ni'mah in itself. And another blessing upon that is that it's not just any type of good Bashir, but it's the best of the best. The sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there can't be anything in which or any time in which a slave is happier than sitting down with his or her prophet. Looking and listening to your prophet. Huh? Looking and listening to your prophet. You know what the Prophet looked like? You want to hear what he said? You want to know about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Then sit down and open up the book of Hadith. Sit down and open up the book of Hadith and that's you and your Prophet. Alayhi Salatu Salaam. So there can't be a time in which you're happier. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran Al-Kareem, Allah bi dhikr Allah tatma in al He says, don't the hearts find serenity, rest, calmness and stillness in Allah's dhikr. In the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that's a blessing in itself. And the hadith that we mentioned last week, we said it was the hadith of Anas in which those men came to the Prophet Sallallahu household or the Prophet Sallallahu chambers where his wives lived. How do we do it? Quran also says Hujurat. Okay? Asking about the Prophet Sallallahu Ibadah. What he did in the house, how did he pray, how did he sleep, how did he fast. And they were informed of it. And for one reason or another, they felt that they had to do more. They felt that it wasn't enough for them. If this was the Prophet Sallallahu did, and he was forgiven for his sins, then what about us? And when the Prophet Sallallahu heard about what they said, what they did, and what they wanted to do, he rejected them. And he criticized them. And he said, as for me, then I pray and I also sleep that night. As for me, I fast, and there's days in which I eat and drink. As for me, I marry women. I don't live a lifestyle in which I'm just, you know, totally secluded away from anything from the worldly life. That's not my way. And those who don't want my way, those who are not pleased with my way, those who don't find sufficiency in my sunnah, then they are not from me. They aren't from me. No matter what the interpretation of that part of the hadith means, it definitely isn't good. It definitely is something that's negative, it's not positive. Whether it means that that person isn't a Muslim, or whether that means that that person has strayed from the correct path, one way or another, it's negative. If you don't find sufficiency in Sunnah to Muhammad وسلم, you're not from the Prophet وسلم. In this life, and thereafter, resurrection, his intercession, Drinking from his pond, how we said, what are we going to do? The prophetic gauntlets. Drinking from this sweet pond that you'll never become thirsty afterwards once you drink from. You're not going to get that if you don't find sufficiency in what he did and what he said and what he legislated. And that in itself is paramount. Pertaining to marriage and things besides marriage. Everybody clear this is what we took in Friday's class. It says the hadith is collected in Bukhari and in Muslim. And we mentioned the main benefits from this hadith, the main lessons from this hadith, and an issue with regards to taking or enjoying things from the worldly life. Is it permissible to have good things? Or is it haram? Is it recommended? Or is it dispraised? We explain all of that in detail. The next hadith the author mentions of Hafid ibn Hajar Allah Ta'ala and says, and once again the book that we read from is Bulub al Maram of Hafid ibn Hajar al that title there is not from the author. That's from the one who edited the book, Subhi Halaq, 
hadith number 914. It's the third hadith in the chapter, the chapter of marriage, the 914th hadith of the book. He says, وَعَنْهُ يعني Anas. Also narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه, قَالَ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ يَأْمُرُنَا بِالْبَاءَ وَيَنْهَا عَنِ التَّبَتُّلْ نَنْيًا شَدِيدًا وَيَقُولُ تَزَوَّجُ الْوَلُودَ الْوَدُودِ فَإِنِّي مُكَافِرٌ بِكُمْ وَالْأَنْبِيَاءَ يَوْمٌ قِيَامًا رواه أحمد وصحب بن حبان He says, narrated Anas رضي الله عنه The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to command us to get married He commanded us to fulfill our sexual desires in a permissible manner and he used to forbid and prohibit us severely from being celibate. He used to prevent us severely from doing that. And the Prophet used to say to us, marry a woman who's fertile, loving, and affectionate. For indeed, on the day of judgment, I will boast. I will compete with the other prophets and messengers in boasting about whose nation is largest. And boasting whose nation is largest. This hadith is connected by Imam Ahmed and Ibn Hibban, rahimahullah, declared it to be Sahih. Once again, the author says, وَعَنْهُ قَالَ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ يَأْمُرُنَا بِالْبَاءَ وَيَنْهَا عَنِ التَّبَتُّلِ نَهْيًا شَنِيدًا وَيَقُومُ تَزَوَّجُ الْوَلُودَ الْوَدُودِ فَإِنِّي مُكَافِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ رَوَى أَحْمَدُ وَصَحَّهُ بْنِ حِبَّانِ Narrated Anas رضي الله عنه The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would command us to marry and forbid us from being celibate in a very severe manner. And he also used to say marry a woman who is very fertile marry a woman who is loving and affectionate because on the Day of Judgment I will compete with the Prophets and boasting on who has the largest nation. And this hadith has been collected by Imam Ahmed and has been authenticated by Ibn Hibban, a scholar of hadith of the 4th century. Tayyip, who is our reader tonight? Who is our volunteer tonight to read? Who wants the reward from the Prophet, from Allah, for reading the Sunnah of the Prophet? Who wants the reward? Who wants the ajr? Who wants to go to paradise? Who wants the, good, the, the scale of good deeds to be tipped over? Who wants Allah to forgive him of their sins? We need someone to read. This is the reason. Seeking knowledge is a means of getting Allah's mercy. Father Bashir, Bashirak Allah Bukhay. I mean, yeah. وأنه أقال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمرنا بالبعاج بالباء 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 وينها عن عن ال عن تبتل نهيا شديدا. Can you just light off, please? Just light us off. نهيا شديدا. نهيا شديد شديدا ويقول زوج الوجود. لا تزوجوا تزوج الود الودود الولود الولود والودود لا الولود الودود الولود والودود ما في واو ما عندنا واو يا 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 فضل تزوج الولود والود والودود there's no واو there الود الولود الولود يا وال وال لا بسم الله يا تزوج تزوج الودود الودود الودودة فإني مكاثر مكاثر منكم الأنبياء يوم القيامة رواه أحمد وصحه وصحه ابن هبان أحسن اقرأه مرة ثانية بسم الله كان وعنه وعنه كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمرنا بالبعاء بالباء بالباء قل الباء الباء وينهى عن التبتل نهيا شديدا ويقول تزوج تزوج الودود الولود الولود فاني لا الولود الودود الولود الودود فاني مكاثر بكم الانبياء يوم القيامه رواه احمد أحسنتم. We need another reader. بسم الله تفضلوا. وعنه قال. وعنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمرنا بالباءة. 
وينهى عن التبتل تبتل نهيا شديدا ويقول تزوج الودود الولود تزوج الولود على الودود تزوجوا تزوج الولود الودود فاني مكاثر بكم الانبياء يوم القيامه رواه احمد وصححه ابن حبان احسنت جزاك الله خير ون مور بسم الله وعنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعمرنا بالباعه وينهى وينهى عن التبتل نحيا شديدا ويقول تزوج الولود الودود فاني مكاثر بكم الانبياء يوم القيامه رواه إيه رواه احمد وصححه ابن حبان احسنت جزاكم الله خير هو از ذا انجلش ترانزليشن اوف ذيم اني باي ذا انجلش ترانزليشن ودود يو هاف ان يو كار رايت ان ترانك ذا ترانزليشن ان ذا بوك ان شاء الله فور فرايداي هاف ان يو كار ولوغ مرام اني باي اوس هاف ذا ترانزليشن On your smartphone, on your tablet, Sheikh Mahdi. You gotta have, you gotta be ready, right, Khalil? Yes, sir. <coughs> At all times. Tahir. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you all. I mean. Khair, inshallah. Who can give me the translation of this hadith from memory? I said it twice or three times. Hamza? Anybody else? Who can give it? How about you? Can you give it a shot? What is it? Give us a, even if you gotta paraphrase it, the oh. translation of the hadith. Who narrated the hadith? Ibn uh, Abdullah. Who narrated it from the companions? Anas. 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 What does the hadith say? It says uh, he was talking about um, the Prophet used to command us to do what? It was talking about um, the, you know, advising the. La, he didn't say advice. No way. No. No, he said paraphrase. La. That's different though. That's if you're changing the meaning. Oh, okay. He said, yet more command. Okay. Ah, yeah. He command. He yeah. ordered us he ordered to us get to, married. To marry and to marry affectionate woman, pious woman. Uh, They can have many children. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Right. 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 So that on the day of Yom Kippur, he can boast that the Muslims will be more. There will be more. And, and what else in the hadith that the prophet used to forbid them from something? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's do not practice a life of abstinence at all. Right, khair inshallah. Off he then says, وَلَهُ شَاهِدٌ عِنْدَ أَبِي دَوُودِ وَالنَّسَائِ وَمِنْ حِبَانَ مِنْ حَدِيثِ مَا أَقْلِبْ مِيَسَاهِ He says there's another narration, a supporting narration, and we call a hadith that is related by another companion, but has a similar meaning. Even if it's not word for word, but a similar meaning, we call this a shahid. Call this what? A shahid. وله شاهد يعني وله حديث آخر بنفس هذا المعنى ولو اختلف اللفظ عن معقل النساء رضي الله تعالى عنه بنفس هذا الأمر بالباعة والنهي الشديد عن التبتل The author says طيب الصنعاني رحمه الله says التبتل الانقطاع عن النساء وترك النكاح انقطاعا إلى عبادة الله تعالى وأصل التبتل القطع ومنه قيل لمريم عليه السلام البتول ولفاطمة رضي الله عنها البتول انقطاعهما عن نساء زمانيهما دينا وفضلا ورغبة في الآخرة الصناعي says that this word التبتل where it was translated he said abstinence or being celibate, or whatever you want to word it in English, he says it means to leave off marriage, to leave off women, to have no concern, no desire with regards to women, period. And to have total focus on worship, to be a monk, to be a monk. In other words, you mean that, yeah, I mean, abstinence and monasticism are not directly, yeah, it's not a requirement. But in most cases, you say, in most cases, if a man has nothing to do with women, in most cases, he's focused on what? Yeah. On a worship. Right. Spiritual. In most cases, there you go, spirituality. Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindu, Shaolin monk. In most cases, somebody that works, they're focused on what? Worship. There may be men who play sports, or boxers, who play football, who leave off 
intimate relations with women periodically from time to time. Right, Khalil? In training camp, no women. Before the game, in the playoffs. But in most cases, a person who stays totally away from women, and nine out of ten times that person is what? Involved in what? Or in most cases, a monk. In most cases, he's what? We agree on this? No. No, yes or no, it's one. Agreed. Right. So he says here, that's what the word tabatul means. It is to break away from women, to cut off women. All right? Uh, and the origin, to give further benefit and further clarification of this word, he says the origin of this word in the Arabic language, the Lughan Arabi al Fusha, he says, is to cut, qata, to sever something, to cut it off. Uh, in Maryam salam, she was given the title of what? Batul. Why? She was a virgin. Huh? La. Fatima radiallahu anha was given the title Batul. Why? Asanani says, because they were so far from all women during their time. In religion, in virtue, and desire for thereafter. They were so far ahead and beyond all contemporary women. Everybody got this? Everybody clear on this? Tight. He then says, Wal maratul walud kathiratul wilada. Wa yu'rafu dhalika fil bikri bi hali qarabatiha. Wal wadudu al mahbubatu bi kathrati ma hiya ali. Min khisar al khayli wa husn al khuluk. Wa tahabubi ila zawjiha. He says in the hadith that says, Al walud. Marry a woman who is walud. And we benefit from these brothers and sisters when you're studying the Arabic language. There could be a description of a feminine uh, or a female or something that's feminine gender that doesn't have the term abuta. Doesn't have what? Term abuta. Because he says, Tazawajul walud. He says waluda. With a tad at the end. So it could be a man or a woman. We have different, huh? like Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu, or Hamza. Has a term abuta on the end of the name, but it's not a feminine name. Okay? Everybody understand this? And then we may have a woman's name such as Fatima that has the ta on the end, huh? After the mean. And then we may have a woman's name such as Su'ad or Maryam, okay? Or Hajjah that has no ta at the end, period. This is a benefit for those studying the Arabic language. Khayr, inshallah. Is that camera plugged up? Is the cord on? Yep. Okay, fine. Khayr, moving on. He says. What's meant by this woman or this word walud is a woman that has or she's very fertile. She can give birth to many children. Woman asks, how is this? If I marry a woman who's never been with a man before, it's preferable to marry a woman who's a virgin. How do I know she can have many children? He says, by looking at her relatives. How many sisters does she have? How many brothers does she have? How many cousins? Look at her family. Where did she come from? Her background. All right? Where a woman comes from, this tribe, this city, her family, she has six and seven brothers and sisters. It's not guaranteed that she have a lot of children, but in most cases, she's going to give birth to many children. She's the only child. Her mother was the only child. Her grandmother was the only child. In most cases, she's not going to give birth to too many children. And along with us, we say in most cases. So he says, that's what's meant by that word, walud. As for the word, wadud, Similar to your name, he says, then it is the woman who is beloved. Not she loves you, but the one whom you love. And listen carefully, he says, that is because of the abundant amount of good characteristics that she has. She has good khuluk. She's respectful, she's obedient, she's polite, she's lovely, she's nice, she's caring, she's soft, and she's affectionate. And that is a cause for you to love her. And then he also says, what to have book, and she also loves you. She's also a woman who's easy and simple and who allows you to love her and she loves you. That's the woman you should marry. You should marry a woman that's cold and harsh. You should marry a woman that has a very uh, sarcastic tongue, very long tongue. A woman that doesn't have these good characteristics, even if she's beautiful, even if she's pretty. Because in most cases, that beauty not only will it fade, but her character is going to be so ugly and nasty, you're not going to be able to step close to her. You're not going to be able to put a finger on her without her saying something and insulting with her tongue. And vice versa. The same applies to a man, sister. You want to marry a brother? The brother is not known in the community for good piety. He's not known to be a good, righteous brother. 
He's not known to be in the masjid, to pray, to sit in the classes, to give charity. He's not known to be courageous and brave and truthful. He's not known for that. He's known for his street life. He's known to be the man here, to be the man there. He looks good, he's nice, he's this and he's that. He has smooth, gift of the gab. It looks nice in the beginning, you think you'll be happy, but when he starts disrespecting you, berating you, mistreating you, not fulfilling your responsibilities, he doesn't want to pray in the morning, get up for fudge, get the heck out of my face. Shut up, leave me alone. He doesn't want to go to the match, he doesn't pray to Well, it's not exaggeration, Juan. This is real life stuff. Form class to be on a daily basis. On a daily basis. A salah like the mufti. Can you please advise my husband? He says, don't wake me up for the salah. Can you please speak to my husband? He says, I'm not giving you anything, get out of my face, don't ask me for nothing. But when you married this man, did he have good character? Was he known to have good character? No, he wasn't. You married him for one reason or another. And now you're tasting the bitter fruits of that. So this hadith gives us wisdom. Marry a spouse, someone that has good deed. Good deed. That's the spouse you should look for. And there's going to be problems in any marriage. No marriage is perfect. Every situation has its ups and its downs, its pros and its cons. However, when you can minimize those problems, when you can take something to cut out some of those issues that are unnecessary, you save yourself a lot of stress and drama. You save a lot of what? Stress and drama. And it works on both sides, both ways, brothers and sisters. Ah, it's important, both ways. Not only do you love the woman, but she is willing to love you as well. Asanani then says, Wal mukathara al mufakhara. وَفِيهِ جَوَازُهَا فِي الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَجْهُ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ أُمَّتَهُ أَكْثَرُ فَثَوَابُهُ أَكْثَرُ لِأَنَّ لَهُ مِثْلَ أَجْلِ مَنْ تَبِعَهُ And the hadith, the part of hadith that says فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ He says this word in the Arabic language al-mukathara means al-mufakhara is mutual boasting mutual boasting, showing off, bragging, showboating He says this part of the hadith proves that it is permissible to brag and boast in the hereafter. Mm. In other words, boasting and bragging shouldn't be done where? Mm. <laughs> Not to be done. But in the hereafter, the person will say, How will I? Oh, it says what? How Mukrahu? Kitabia. This is my book. Read it. Look at my good deeds. So therefore, in the hereafter, there will be boasting and bragging. Boasting and bragging should be avoided in the worldly life. Why is this? Why is the Prophet of going to boast and brag? He says because if his ummah is greater in number, then he will have more rewards. Because the Prophet of Islam gets the rewards of those who follow him. Every single Muslim in this room right here, the Prophet of Islam gets a piece of your reward. Your salah, your fasting, your hajj, everything that you do, the Rasul gets some of it. So the more, the merrier. So the Prophet is saying, I want more Muslims. Let the Muslims be an abundant number. Family planning, don't have any children, no, too many children are bad, I can't maintain them, so on and so on and so forth, is not from Islam. It's not from the Sunnah. It is recommended to have as many children as you possibly can. Why is that? There are many reasons. From the reasons is that the Prophet says something will be happier. You have a greater reward, a higher station. So I the Muslims say, I love the Prophet says something, but I don't want to have any children. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, Sallu ala al-Habib. They have stickers on the back of their car. Sallu ala al-Nabi. Salli ala al-Nabi. Send prayers upon the Prophet sallam. If you love him so much, why don't you follow his sunnah? So having children is a good thing. It's a means of barakah and khair. Bidhna subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let alone the rewards that you will get from your children. Let alone the assistance that you will need when you get older. Let alone, and there's so many other things that come from children. But this is what the Prophet sallam says. So therefore, uh, we take from this hadith what? What's the first benefit we give from this hadith? Shaykh Mahdi. <coughs> Who can give me a benefit that we learn from this hadith? Fadl, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, Fadl. First, looking for a wife that will be compatible to you. It is recommended to find a wife that is religious and compatible. Right, good. What else? What else do we get from this hadith, brothers and sisters? Recommended to have a wife. That fertile. is highly recommended to have a woman who's fertile. You should not marry a woman that cannot have children for one reason or another. Whether her family doesn't have a lot of children, whether her she has an operation, a surgery on her, or whether the doctors have stated 
her body cannot produce children. Rather, that's an issue that will come later on. Is it even permissible to marry her? Is it even permissible to marry a woman who cannot have children? But we know for sure whether it's haram or not, it's not preferable. It isn't preferable at all. Fine. What else do we get from this hadith, brothers and sisters? For you to be on point yourself. Huh? For you to take care of yourself as well, for you to uphold your rights. What else do we get from this hadith? The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets benefit for everybody, for the Muslims. That, that the Prophet will get benefit and rewards from every single Muslim who follows him. That's a lot of people. To, to marry the woman who bear children and uh, to, to know that is uh, to find out the, her family and the lineage. First and foremost, brothers and sisters, this hadith is a proof for those who say that marriage is obligatory. For those who say that you must get married. Because it says, yet muruna. Okay? And we also benefit from this hadith the prohibition of abstinence. The prohibition of abstinence. That's what we take directly from this hadith. What the other hadith say, those who cannot marry should fast, that's the definition. But from this narration, we take what? The prohibition of abstinence. We also give this hadith is the virtue of good character. The virtue of good character. And the virtue and the recommendation and the permissibility to have love in your marriage. You should love your wife and she should love you. Whether that's including romance, to be romantic to your wife, for her to be romantic with you, that is a good thing because it is a means of strengthening your bond. Strengthening what? Your bond. Your bond between husband and wife. Fathom. Go ahead. Also, do not marry a woman that has like, a foul language. Um, you should not marry a woman that has a foul tongue. You should not marry a woman who's insolent. You should not marry a woman that every five words she's cursing and swearing. That is not good. I can change her, she's gonna change, inshallah. In most cases, it's not gonna work, and vice versa, sisters. It's not just for men, vice versa. Well, Allah, we've seen this so many times before. Says he wants to marry a brother, he's a good brother, he's nice, he's cute, he looks good, he's this and he's that, but he's, he's a drug dealer. We're not saying he's not Muslim, but he sells drugs. Oh, inshallah, he's gonna stop, he's gonna change, I'm gonna take him to the class, then we get the phone call. Two weeks or a month or three months later after my shit, he da 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 kings. No, you knew he was a drug dealer from day one. You were pleased with that lifestyle. So that's not the way. You need to look for these things from the beginning. Look for a good spouse. And rights of the children they begin with this. The rights of the children don't start when a child is born, when a child goes to school, when you pay for insurance, you put them in college. La, the hawk. The right of the child begins in looking for a good spouse. For men and for women. For men and for women. You want to look, you want to have a good plant. If you want to plant a tree, you have to look for good soil from day one. Good soil. Rich, firm, fertile soil. A good place to plant that tree. And not, you don't wait till the tree is planted, then you say, I'll give it water, I'll bring it sunlight. No. That's how we do. Okay, inshallah. Moving on to the next hadith. The he says, وعن أبي وليلة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال تنكح المرأة لأربع لمالها ولحسبها ولجمالها ولدينها فاظفر بذات الدين تربت يدك متفق عليه مع بقية السبعة Nari Abu Huraira The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said A woman can be or should be married for four main reasons Four main reasons For her wealth her genealogy, her beauty, and for her religion. Marry a woman who's religious and pious. May your hands be dirty and dusty. May your hands be dirty and dusty. This hadith is agreed upon along with the rest of the seven collectors of hadith. Tayyip, who's our reader? We need a new reader, a new qali. Bismillah. <laughs> Ascent. Who's the next reader? We need as many rewards as possible. Who's the next reader? Nasir, Father. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه 
عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تنكح المراه تنكح المراه المراه no one can correct them except for me as we said for me and also no one else Pardon. Li Arba. See, it's a lamb and an elf. Li Arba. Lima Liha, Waliha, 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 Brothers and sisters, to help us out in reading the following things. Pay close attention to Nasser. It's for you and for everyone else. Very important. When you read Arabic, you should not spell out the words you're trying to read out loud. Spell it out to yourself silently. Then when you feel like you got it, even if it's still wrong, but if you feel like that's how it should sound, then you say it audibly. Say it out loud. But never spell it out out loud. Everybody got that? Secondly, Always make sure that you take time and carefully look at every letter and every vowel sound. I'm speaking off of experience. I was, I'm not from no foreign country. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I didn't know Arabic. Alhamdulillah, Allah allowed me to learn. So I'm trying to give you some benefits from my experience. It is most of the time when we read Arabic, it's a simple mistake. It comes from lack of concentration. Not that the word is too difficult, not that you can't read, Nasir, but sometimes we're hasty and just we it doesn't say that it does, but that's what's familiar in our minds. So take your time, look at every letter, look at every vowel. Inshallah. Allah bless you all. Father Nasir. Fadfar. Fadfar bida bida tiddini tarik tari. You spell it out loud. Spell it out silently, then say it. See the difference now? He's saying it to himself firstly, then you say it out loud when you feel like you got it. Taribat Taribat Yadaka. Much better. But it takes practice. It's hard to break those old habits. That's why it's very important that you, when you study Arabic, you have a teacher that can teach you the right way from the beginning. That way you won't have to break yourself out of the old bad habits. Khayr inshallah. Fire. The hadith says, narrated Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet said a woman should be married for four reasons. Four reasons. Tayyip, we need someone to read the sharh. Bismillah. We need someone to read the explanation for us. Qala al hadith ikhbarun. Who's the volunteer? Al hadith ikhbarun bi anna al ladi yadru. Bismillah. Fadarun. الحديث الحديث إخبار لأن الذي يدعو الرجال إلى التزوج أحد هذه الأربعة 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 